Hello friends, welcome back to the third part of this mini-series to learn how to create effective and efficient database architectures. So in the previous video, we discussed the simple five-step process that we can take in order to create effective and efficient relational databases. So in this video, we'll be putting that theory to the test. So I've just put what we discussed in the previous video into this nice looking diagram in Figma over here where each of these post-it notes or each of these rectangles and squares represents a table each and these arrows over here represents the foreign correlation from one table to another. For instance, our book ID column in our additions table over here has a foreign correlation to our books table, specifically the ID column. And there's also these relationships over here. All right, so now that we have our database schema mapped out and we know exactly what columns should be in what tables and how the tables should relate to each other, let's see how we can take this and translate it into actual tables in our Superbase database. So let's get to it right now. All right, so the first thing that you want to do is obviously you want to go to superbase.com and sign up for a, an account if you already haven't done so. But once you have successfully created an account and signed in, you should be brought to this dashboard page over here. And the first thing that we want to do is we want to create a new project and you need to choose your organization, which would most likely be your email. So for mine, I have this tutorial organization, so I'll choose that. For our project name, we can just give it books repository. Then we can also insert a database password. Usually I just generate a password. And then we can click on create new project and Superbase will handle the creation of the project for us. Yep, so this can take a while. So I'll see you again once the project has been successfully created. All right, so Superbase has just finished setting up our project. And now to create our tables, we can go over to this left sidebar over here. You can see just under this home icon, there's this option for table editor. And that is exactly where we want to go in order to create our tables. Once you click on that, you can see that we are inside our table editor now. All right, so right in the middle over here, there's a button to create a new table, and that's exactly what we want to do. So we click on this button, and here is where we'll be defining the columns as well as relationships for our table. So let's start out with the table name. Let's create our books table first. And one important thing to note about the naming of your tables make sure that they are all in lowercase letters. So do not add capitalized letters to your table names because that could cause some problems when trying to find your table and identify your table later when we are using the SQL editor. So just make sure to name your tables in fully lowercase letters so that there won't be any problems later. We can just leave the description as blank for now. And now for this enable role level security option, we actually want to disable this and we want to confirm. So role level security is just another additional layer of security to make sure that the data is well protected and can only be accessed by certain users of the app. For this simple tutorial app, we will not be publishing this on the App Store or Google Play Store, so no data is being compromised here. So we'll just disable role level security for our use case. But if you're making an actual app that you want to publish on the App Store and Google Play Store that will be used by real users, then you should enable role level security. And there are multiple tutorials on role level security on YouTube, so you should go check that out as well. Right, so we can continue to scroll down and you can see that we have reached the columns definition section. So this is basically where we'll be defining all of our columns. You see that Every new table comes with predefined columns for ID as the primary key, as well as the creator at column for as the creator at timestamp. So when the row was inserted, let's go ahead and go back to our database schema and let's see what we need. So we need our ID column, which is actually already defined for us. And we also want our title column. So we can actually go ahead and remove this creator at column and we just name it as title. For the type over here, we want to choose the text. So this is basically a string and the title will be obviously a text. And now the next column that we will need is our ISBN number. Now at first glance, we may think that the ISBN number column should be of type int 8. However, if we actually take a look at what the ISBN number looks like, 
you can see over here that there are dashes in between a lot of the digits as well. And you know that we can't include these dashes inside our number itself. So if we actually want to include these dashes, what we should do is we should actually store it as a text, a type text instead of type int. So that's a thing to take note of as well. You need to be sure of what the type of your column should be. All right, and last but not least will be language. So this will just be language. And the type will also be of type text. Now, if you continue to scroll down, you can see that there are the foreign keys over here. There's this option for us to add foreign keys. But our book table does not have any foreign key relations to other tables. So there are no arrows pointing outwards from this books table to other tables. So we don't need to add any foreign keys. You can just click on save. And now you can see that our books table has been inserted into our table editor with along with all the columns as well. Yes, so it's that easy to actually create tables in Superbase. Now let's continue creating our other tables as well. And let's continue with our authors table over here. So you can click on new table, we can give it the name for authors, and we also want to disable row level security. For the columns, we want to change this creator add column to our name column. And we also want to change the type to text. Next will be our country, then followed by birth date. So country, country will be of type text as well. But now birth date, instead of type text, Superbase actually has this option for a date option. So this will be a calendar date with the year, month, as well as date, which is exactly what we're looking for. So perfect. Now, our authors table will also not have any foreign key relations since there are no arrows pointing outwards from our authors table. So we can click on save. And perfect, we have our authors table done. Now let's work on our additions table. So this additions table is a little more interesting because we do have a foreign key relation to our books table. So let's see how we can do that. So first, the name will be additions, disable role level security, and fill in the columns. So this will be addition number. Now since this is an actual number, we can give it type integer 8. So it's assigned 8-bit integer. Next will be the publisher. The publisher will be of type text. Next will be the publish date. And since it's a date, we can give it the date type. And last but not least will be our book ID. And this is the column that will reference our books table. So in our books table, the ID column is of type integer 8. So this book ID will also need to have the same type, which is integer 8. And now we need to add a foreign correlation. So we need to click on this button and we need to select the schema. You can see that the public schema is selected over here and whenever you create a table in Superbase, it will always be in the public table unless otherwise specified. So we want to select our public schema and the table that we want to reference to is our books table. And now we can choose the column that is referencing our books table inside our additions table. As you can see here, this is our additions table. So for inside our additions table, we want to select book ID and inside our books table, we want to reference the ID column. If we continue scrolling down, we can see that there are two more options that we can choose here, which is an action if reference row is updated and an action if reference row is removed. So the reference row over here refers to the row inside our books table. So this basically means what we want to do if a row in our books table is updated or deleted. So usually I just put both as cascade. So what cascade does is whenever the reference row is updated or deleted, the corresponding row is also updated and deleted as well. So we click on save and then we can save our additions table. All right, nice. So we have three out of four tables done. So now the last table would be our book author relation table. So we can just go ahead and create one last table. We can name it book 
author relation. We want to disable row level security and we want to add our columns over here. Remember the book author relations table also needs to have an ID column as the primary key. And now we need an author ID. which will be of type integer 8 as well as a book ID which will also be of type integer 8 and now we have to add the foreign key relationships for both of these columns so we need to select the public schema once more and let's deal with the authors table first we want to choose the author ID table which will reference the ID column inside of our authors table and likewise we need to set this as cascade Oops, cascade. Yes. And now we do the same thing but for our books table. And then we just save this and then we save our table. Alright, great. So now we have our four tables over here. But one more thing that I'd like to introduce in this video is the concept of Superbase Views. In Superbase, a view is a virtual table that is created from one or more existing tables. But unlike regular tables, a view doesn't actually store any actual data. Instead, it updates dynamically by fetching data from your already existing tables. So you can't really edit a view. But whenever the data is updated in its constituent tables, the view will be automatically updated as well. So a view is basically a good way of joining tables together so that you can access it all at one go without having to create complex SQL queries. So now let's see how we can create views in Superbase. Well, in order to create views in Superbase, we have to go over to our SQL editor. And inside our SQL editor, we do have to write some code. But don't worry, the code is very simplistic and I'll be walking through it step by step so that you all can follow as well. So let's say I want to create a view of books data together with my editions data. So I want to get the title of the book, ISBN number, language, as well as the edition number, publisher, as well as publish date. So how can we do that? So inside our SQL editor, we want to type create this just tells Superbase that we want to create something new. And what do we want to create? We want to create a view. And what is the name of our view? Well, we can just give it the name books, oops, books, editions, book edition view. So this is the name of our view that we want to give it. And then we have to type in the keyword as. And then we can enter into a new line and put tab so that we have some separation so it makes our code clearer. And then after this, we have to list all of the columns that we want. So which columns do we want? Well, we want our ID, title, ISBN number, as well as language columns for our books table, inside our books table, which is basically all of our columns in the books table. So when we want all of the columns in our books table, we can just type in books, so that's the name of our table, the books table, dot, and we can actually type in asterisk. So what this asterisk means, it basically means all of the columns inside of our books table. And then we can type comma, and then we can enter into a new line. And now we want to get the columns inside our additions table as well. But we don't want to get all of the columns. We only need the addition number, publisher, publisher date. So we only need these three columns. So then I can type in additions, which is the name of our additions table. And then dot, you can see there's auto filling it in for us. So we want our addition number, comma, additions dot, publisher, comma, as well as additions dot, publish date. And we don't have to add the last comma over here. Now you can go backspace to go back to this indentation. And then now we need to type in the keyword from. And this from word just basically specifies which tables you need to get it. So we want to get it from our books table. Then we have to enter once more, go to the next line. And now since we are joining two tables together, 
We then want to give the keyword join. And now we need to specify the table that we want to join to our books table, which will be our additions table. But that is not enough. We also need to give a condition to join our tables on. And this condition will be where our book ID is equal to the ID column inside our books table. So we need to give it the keyword on. And now we can give the condition over here. So this condition will be additions dot book ID is equal sign is equal to our books dot ID column. And now to end off this query, we'll just type a semicolon. And if we scroll to the right, over here, we see that we can run our query. Okay, and unfortunately, you can see that once we run the query, there is an error over here. And this error tells us that there is a syntax error at or near books over here. So what do you do when you run into an error? Usually what I like to do is I like to copy the whole code and I like to go to ChatGPT. And in ChatGPT, I'll just paste the code over here. So I'll just paste my code in ChatGPT. And then, and once I paste it, I'll just give it to ChatGPT to see what's wrong. And you can see that ChatGPT is so great that it's able to tell me what the error is. So my error is that I forgot to insert this select keyword. So that is very important after this as statement. So after this first statement, I also need to type in select. So you can see how we can use AI to help us solve errors in our code as well. And it's so much quicker and efficient than debugging it yourself. So we can click on run. And you can see that we have this beautiful message, success, no rows return. If we go back to our table editor, you can see now that we have this new row over here, this new books edition view. If we click on that, you see that it contains the ID column, title, ISBN number, as well as language, but now it also contains the edition number, publisher, as well as publish date columns. If we go into our book and we insert a new book. Let's say we give it a title of book one. ISBN number, we'll just give it a random number. Language, English. If we click on save, we have a new book over here. Now, if we go into editions, and now let's add a new edition for our book. So we insert a new row. This will be the first edition. Publisher will be me. So I just published a new book today. That's great. And then the book ID, we can select the record and we want to reference this book ID. So this will be, so this will be the first edition of book one. We can also insert another row to create a second edition. So wow, two editions in one day. Or maybe for the publisher, we we'll just give it a different publisher. Then for the publish dates, let's set it as 19th of November, but it will be the same book ID, book ID one. So we have two different editions for the same book. Now, if we go into our books editions view, you can see that there are now two rows in this view over here with, for the same book, but it has different edition numbers. And one good thing about views is that they update in real time as well. So whenever a new edition for a book is inserted, then a new row is also inserted automatically inside our books edition view. And now we can also get all of these data at once. All right, so I think this video has already gotten quite long, so let's just call it a day for now. So in the fourth and final part of this mini series, we'll be seeing how we can take our tables that we have created over here and actually link it up together with our Flutterflow app. And I hope to see you in the last part of this series as well. See you there.